everyone. This is Jackie Duje of What is Black Podcast. This episode is presented by Audible. I've listened to Audible for years now and have enjoyed fiction and nonfiction books. On a recent episode of What is Black Podcast, I talked with author Ashley St. Armand about her Audible original book, Viva Durant and the Secret of the Silver Buttons. If you'd like to learn more about her book, download a free 30-day trial of Audible at www.audibletrial.com forward slash what is black. But also know that Audible provides more than books. They offer podcasts, guided wellness programs, and other exclusive Audible originals like Ashley's book. During this episode, our guest, Laura Schulte from Generation.mom, shares another book um, that you can find on Audible, Time Management by Marissa Volpe-Lonick. You can sign up for a 30-day trial to listen at www.audibletrial.com forward slash what is black. We have a special episode of what is black podcast. We're actually, I'm actually doing a podcast swap um, with now a good friend. I'll, I'll call her a good friend, um, Laura Schulte of Generation Mom. So welcome, Laura. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for calling me a good friend. It's so awesome to connect with other mothers and women in this podcasting space. I think it's incredibly valuable. So thanks for having me. You are so welcome. And I definitely enjoyed um, being interviewed by you and Jen. Unfortunately, Jen, um, Laura's partner for her podcast, um, wasn't able to join us today, but we she is here in spirit with us today. Yes, yeah, she is. She was sad to miss it, but she had to attend to her little one. Yeah, and she's also super pregnant right now. So <laughs> like she's due next week. So she probably needed a break. No, totally, totally understand. Yeah. I think that's what, you know, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, you know, creating a community, having moms create a community. But before we get into, into that, um, the meat of the topic, if you can share a little bit about yourself and your, your podcast. Yeah, sure. So my name is Lara and I live in San Diego, California. My partner, Jen, I'm just going to talk to her, you guys, about her. Um, You guys are all going to be familiar with her and feel like she was here with us today. Um, She also lives in San Diego. Um, We both are boy moms. She's about ready to have her second child, a boy. I have my two boys. Um, So our first sons, they are only a day apart in age with their names. Her son is Grant. My son is Sawyer. And um, they were born in 2017. So they're just over two years old right now. And Jen and I met in a baby group. So, you know, one of those groups where you sit around in a circle and everybody kind of talks about what stage their baby's at and somebody kind of coaches you and tells you what to feed your baby, how often to feed your baby, how they should be sleeping, and like all of the things that Yes, we should know as parents, but Jen and I were like, oh, these aren't really the conversations we want to be having. We want to talk about the things that nobody told us about, like that we're experiencing. Are we alone in this? And we were just so craving those conversations in that community. And we didn't know each other at all, but we identified that one another were kind of alluding to these conversations when it was our turn to talk in, um, in this group, you know, we both brought up anxiety and and why we started feeling so anxious. And that was something that maybe felt a little taboo to the rest of the group. And so we ended up taking our conversation outside of mommy group and we would go to lunch and sometimes we'd have a glass of wine even and we'd sit there and it was like we'd known each other forever and not because we felt like immediately comfortable with one another, but because we were so desperate to talk to somebody else that was going through what we were going through. So I learned some of like the most private details of Jen's life in the first 15 minutes of talking to her that like some things that maybe her own family doesn't even know. So, and, and same goes for me. So it was just really funny. Like it motherhood brought us together and not that Jen and I would not be friends in another world, but we didn't have like really mutual connections. Like there was nothing that really would have brought us together besides motherhood. And for that, I'm so grateful Um, because truly that's what I've continued to learn while being a mom over the course of the last two and a half ish years is how powerful community is. So with that being said, I have a background as a life and business coach and I 
had this whole idea and, you know, grand scheme that I was going to return to work pretty soon after I had my child and go back into corporate America and teach businesses and organizations how better to lead and work together as teams and all of that. And then I realized I kept pushing that off and not because it wasn't something I was passionate about anymore because it absolutely is. Um, self-awareness, personal development, all of that is super important to me. And I, and I still work as a coach, but I didn't feel that my voice was super authentic in the corporate world anymore. And I also felt that as a mom, I didn't have time to really go in and work with these corporations and business owners one-to-one like I had prior to having kids. So I thought to myself, how can I change and pivot my career? So it's better suits my family, which means it takes less time so I can be with my family. And how can I additionally really feel authentic in what I'm saying? So I realized that I needed to pivot my audience to motherhood and I needed to reach them by the masses. And so that's where the idea of a podcast around motherhood came about. Now, I didn't know really what the topics were going to be about or what it was going to look like, but I knew I had this really cool friend, Jen. And actually I used to refer to her as my interesting Jen friend because I thought she was so interesting. And I knew that Jen was kind of craving something outside of motherhood and also outside of her own career that she had built for herself. And she wanted something creative. And so one day at coffee, I said to her, you know, I was thinking I had this idea of starting a podcast around motherhood and I'd love for you to join it. And she looks at me kind of funny, her jaws kind of on the ground and her head's tilted. And she's like, why? Like, why wouldn't you just, I think that's a great idea, but like, why would you do this by yourself? Or why don't, wouldn't you do this by yourself? I'm like, well, cause I really believe in like mothers holding one another accountable because they can hold one another accountable. They could do so with grace because, as you know, motherhood is very consuming and things aren't going to be perfect all the time. And there's no one like another mother to really understand that. I also felt that Jen had a lot of differences in me, so it would really create a dynamic conversation and and eventually a dynamic audience for us to speak to. So that's how Generation.mom came about. I will say Jen and I kind of started on our podcasting journey. This was in 2018. Um, We officially launched in July, but we were working towards this for about six months. And um, we quickly realized we were not the expert. And why do we have a podcast on coaching mothers when we really have no idea what we're doing? So that's when we decided to, yes, we share a lot about our own experience, but we don't tell moms, you know, what's right and what's wrong. And instead we found experts to come on our show and try to navigate or help us navigate modern day motherhood. So Jen and I started becoming the guides, kind of your best friend in motherhood and navigating modern day motherhood. We believe that motherhood today looks very different than previous generations, like our mother's generations. That is why we're called generation.mom because we are the moms of the dot-com generation. And with that, so many things have come up. So if you think about it, you know, I look at my mom's generation and for the most part, my mom had me, I'm her first child of three and, and she had me a little bit later in life for her generation. She was 33 years old. Um, but I look at her generation on average and the average woman had their first child at 25. I look at my generation and the average woman has had their first child at 31. So it's a big shift for one generation. But if you, you know, take that into account and then you take into account all the things that have changed to serve us and challenge us from one generation to the next, like take technology, for example, technology is an amazing thing. We have the internet. My mom didn't have the internet when she was you know, raising me as a small child. And what's great about the internet is that we can create businesses for ourselves and we can work from home and stay at home. Or, you know, some employers are finding the, finding the value in having women work for them and also stay home and take care of their children. So technology has served us in that way. It has served us in a way where we have a lot of information at our fingertips and we can find 
find out a lot um, about parenting and motherhood sometimes, and Jackie, I'm sure you can agree with me on this one. It cannot serve us when we maybe rely too much on Dr. Google. That might make pediatricians like yourself a little annoyed. Um, But it also can help in the middle of the night when maybe you can't get a hold of the pediatrician or trying to remember that dosage of Tylenol that you need to give your child or something like that. Um, It also has the ability to bring us together and build community and social media has done that. Now social media can also challenge mothers and get stuck in the comparison trap. And we can talk more about that as well. Um, And then there's amazing things like the medical advancements and how medicine has changed to help us as mothers, how we can now like really, you know, we still have to consider our biological clock, but you know, with, with fertility advancements, we, we know that there might be a backup for us. So it allows us to have children a little bit later in life. Um, and then just in general with women having children later in life, they have certain lifestyles and careers established that mm-hmm. is a big shift for them when they become moms, just to let go of everything that they've worked so hard for and try to transition into this new woman um, and, and re-identify themselves. So that's why we titled Generation at Mom. That is why we believe so much that motherhood looks different and that we need really a team to help us navigate modern day motherhood. And, and I think that it, I think that is so important. No, I mean, I, I have, I have older, older kids now. So I have almost, you know, I actually have almost two adults now, Mm -hmm. but I'm finding even in this phase of mom being a mom that I still need I still need a community even more because, you know, as you'll, as you'll find out, you know, every mom will find out each stage of development is so different, right? Mm -hmm. There will be periods of time when you, you are all in, right? Because your kid, your, your children need you to be there and guide them. And then there are times when you have to start, you know, it's kind of like a dance. They lead sometimes, you lead sometimes. And that's why, that's why I found it so, so fascinating um, that, your podcast focuses on, like you said, creating this mom community. And like we, like I shared earlier, I spoke with um, another colleague of mine who's a pediatrician, but she's also, as you call a mom, a mompreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, she's looking to, um, to start some new businesses using her, using her health background um, to reach other moms, especially moms of younger children. And she talked about, well, she's a mom, but there are not a, not a lot of other moms like her who are trying to be entre- entrepreneurs as well. So you know, again, it sort of that sort of resonated the fact that we do need communities, and and at times we need maybe different types of communities. So I was just wondering for you, why why has it why has it been important um, for you for you to even have community or Jen to have a community? Um, I know it seems like you two have built a community yourself, but why why has it been so important for you and for for moms to have a community? Yeah. I mean, I think it's important for all mothers. I think that motherhood, unfortunately, it's funny because like once you're a mom, you're never alone again, but it can be a very isolating experience for women. You constantly are questioning yourself. Like, am I doing this right? Am I doing enough? Am I a good mom? First of all, if you're questioning those things, like the fact is you are a good mom if you're questioning if you are a good mom. So I just want to remind any listeners of that at any stage in their life um, and in their motherhood. But, um, you know, it can be really isolating. And like sometimes when your kid does something, you know, it, it feels that way. My child, when he was 15 months old, he bit another child at like the gym daycare. And I felt so horrible about it. I picked him up. I went straight to my car and I just cried and it felt incredibly isolated in that moment. And what I decided to do with it was to tell that story of how I had a lot of shame attached to, you know, my 15 month old biting a kid. No, that's a a, a normal developmental stage that kids go through, especially then they're nonverbal. They can't communicate. They get frustrated. They're trying to defend themselves. Maybe they're trying to get the toy back. Who knows? But you know, it happened and I felt really bad. So what I did was I just went on social media and I talked to the generation that mom community on Instagram. And I just said, this happened. It really sucked. 
I feel really bad. I know I'm not alone. If I am alone, nobody's going to respond to this. But if I'm not alone, tell me. And and the bottom line is like so many people came back and they're like, oh, it's a phase. Like, don't worry about it. And then there were, you know, the pediatrician, the same thing. Like, it's a phase. This is what you do. You know, this is how maybe you tell them not to do it. And people had their own bits of advice because they'd experienced it. Or they would just remind me like, hey, when I was a kid, I was a biter and I turned out okay. So it was just like those little gentle reminders that other people are experiencing it or had experienced it um, that made me feel not alone. Now, that's just one example, but, you know, the same thing. You know, when Jen and I first had our discussion, she was just like laid everything out on the table and, and it was like, I just thought like, wow, I found somebody that's like super vulnerable and open like I am. But the bottom line is like, Jen's not, Jen's actually a very, very private person, but she just felt so alone and she wanted somebody else to just express that to, and also acknowledge her feelings. So just like those reasons in itself, I could go on and on why it's important and how it served me forever. But those, those few things are, are like very obvious examples. And sometimes I think it's, um, you know, like you said, I think any, any stage of momhood can be, like you said, can make you feel vulnerable. Right. And even Mm -hmm. I can say, even as a pediatrician, there are times when, I second guess myself, right? Especially when my kids were younger, you know, my husband and I had had a conversation the other day where he said, you know what, you could have died. (laughs) You knew the diagnosis of your, of the kids. Right. But I still made him take them to the doctor. Right. Cause I'm like, you know, God forbid something happened, but I don't know if I ever would have felt comfortable um, sharing that with another, with another pediatrician mom. Right. But I think when I had had that sort of community, I think I would have felt better and it's, it's only over time right now that I really understand the importance of having having this community of moms that you can kind of talk to and say, you know what? Oh, you and I'm even part of a face group, you know, physician mom face group, uh-huh. Facebook group. And that's been that's been very helpful because, you know, I've had I've had questions, either medical questions or questions about family members, you know, that are medically related. And again, I could reach out. Um, to to those moms who are also physicians, and they could they could provide feedback. So I agree with you. I think no matter you know in the corporate world, um, if your your work is primarily as a stay at home mom or you're working outside the home, um, I think it's important to have someone you can kind of talk to um, about you know just you know little things to big things, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Jackie, I just want to acknowledge something you said and say thank you for sharing it. But even as a medical professional and a pediatrician, like you, you, there's self doubt that lived in yourself with your own children. And I think that's an example of a way that we feel when we don't have community. I mean, we're going to doubt ourselves regardless. But, you know, I would never have expected you to say that. And you saying that makes me feel normalized about the self-doubt I have in certain situations that maybe I'm even an expert on when it comes to my kids. Oh yeah. Cause I, I mean, I think that's real because even, you know, okay. I, I can say like, and I've had, I've had friends who tell me, Oh, you, you successfully, successfully parented, um, your two sons. And I am, I am, I take that some that compliment almost with like a little bit of self-doubt, but I think again, it's, it's, it's kind of understanding it, that this is a reaffirming the fact that you have another a sister friend reflecting back to you and acknowledging the work and love that you put into raising your kids. You know, sometimes like you have to, we have to like stop. I, I'm finding this right. Kind of stop and, and take that compliment. Right. And say, look, mm-hmm. yeah, right. You know what? In the moment, my kids are doing very well. I mean, we go through ups and downs, but I can say that I'm proud of the kids of the young men that they are today. And again, I think that's the, that's the beauty of that community um, that you speak, that you speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it sure is. It truly is. So you, you will, you and Jen founded Generation Mom. How Mm -hmm. does, how does Generation Mom really help um, create that community for moms? Yeah. Well, you know, ultimately I think that we bring women together to talk about 
big issues that they feel alone when. So for example, before we really started this podcast, I did not understand or I didn't know what, how to define the feeling of, gosh, like I really love my kid, but I also, I really miss the time I had for myself or I can't wait for nap time. Although when it comes to nap time, why am I just like scrolling through my phone, looking at his picture? Like, what is that feeling? And, you know, while that feeling defined is called maternal ambivalence and it's that ambivalent feeling that you feel about loving motherhood and kind of hating it at the same time. And just being able to kind of talk to some of those issues that maybe we don't have clearly defined or a feeling that we have that we don't know there's definition about and then bringing women together to discuss that. Like I cannot tell you how many women just have emailed us or sent us DMs on Instagram and just said, wow, like I've never identified with anything more than what you talked about with maternal ambivalence. And that's just an example. I mean, this happens all the time. And of course, it feels great to us to hear because we are really putting ourselves out there and talking about things that are hard for us to talk about, but are necessary. And I think that it just, again, like it brings, it creates community. It gets these women together. You know, we we acknowledge the women that support us, that are a part of our community. Yes, we might be kind of the guide and the leader, not the expert, but the guide and the leader to bring these women together. But ultimately, like we're sharing one another's stories and we're just the facilitators. Like we're bringing their expert advice, their inspirational stories, their knowledge to the table as a whole, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that that table analogy, I think, is great because I think, you know, when you think about a family sitting around the table, hopefully you sort of, you know, cr- you create a context that sort of equalizes people and people when they, 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 they're either face to face, right. Or even virtually face to face, people can actually like, you know, sit down and hopefully, you know, just start a conversation. It doesn't have, it could be small talk that then, like you said, ends up into something um, much bigger and broader, which is important. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. I know for, for some women and I, and I can speak personally, it has been hard, right, to try to find, and I almost like think of it as like dating, right? Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, mom dating, right? It's like, okay, how do you find the friend? Especially, you know, especially since as, you know, I think technically, well, I'll stick to my experience, right? Being a professional woman, you know, you're in the grind, you know, I'm married and then just getting caught up in, in family. And sometimes it's difficult to reestablish friendships, right? Because you're trying to figure out like, how do you now balance work? How do you balance your family? That's what my experience. So it has been challenging to sort of have create that community, right? And find find these friends that that will become my community. So I was wondering, have you have you found um, that any of the moms that you talk with, or or you have you dealt with that on the podcast? Yeah, with them struggling to create community, just because yes. like life is so insane, and you're trying to balance working and living and parenting and relationships and all those things. Absolutely. Um, I think, I think that again, like that's one thing that leads to that feeling of isolation is like, I is, is feeling like they just don't have time for that. But the thing is you can't say you don't have time for that. And I was just talking to somebody else that was on our podcast and she was saying, you just have to prioritize and basically, well, change that I can't, I don't have time for that to, I, I, um, that's not something that's a priority to me. So her name's Marissa Lonick and she did, um, she has a, a, a book that she wrote called time management, mom management. Um, so kind of like, just like a little pun off of the mom, But, um, she said like, you just need to figure out what your priorities are. And, and if you are feeling alone within motherhood, you just have to figure out a way to prioritize building community for your own self-care, if that makes sense. So yeah, 
Yeah. So even if it's just calling another friend that's a mom once a week on your drive to work, you could do that. You could do that. Um, that's multitasking, but it's also putting in, um, mindfulness into that multitasking, right? So you're taking that time that maybe you wouldn't have anywhere else to really dedicate to having a conversation and connecting with somebody else. The other thing too, is like, there's a million podcasts, Jackie, like yours and like ours that talk to motherhood. And if you're feeling alone and let's say you live in the middle of nowhere, um, but you do have internet or you have a phone, like you can still feel connected by hearing other women's stories on podcasts. You can go on social media. And I know that social media is this thing where like women oftentimes just share the highlight reel and things look good. But if you can see past that and just remember like, look, this is 10% of somebody's life. And, you know, for the most part, people don't like to show the crummy things that happen to them and kind of the day to day and what makes life life. But, um, and they like to show the good stuff, but if you can remember, like, I can't compare myself to that person. I'm really only seeing their highlight reel, but instead like really lean into the value they're providing and creating a relationship and putting themselves out there, lean in, find your people online and like, listen to their stories about motherhood or send them a DM and, you know, look for communities like ours that, that exist online where you can talk and meet other moms. Um, We also have a Facebook group where you can have, you know, more one-to-one conversation. Look for local events too. Um, Like I said, Jen and I met in a mommy group. Like we quickly realized that that mommy group was not for us, but we identified that one another, we had a connection. And so even if you're an introvert, the thing is, is that when you become a mother and Jackie, I think that you can relate and understand this. When you become a mother, something changes inside of you Mm -hmm. and you can then immediately connect and understand every other woman out there that is a mother. Like something just connects you through that experience of becoming a mom. And I think that that is incredibly powerful. And since becoming a mom myself, I have been able to release a lot of judgment on other women because I remember like they're a mom and they love their children just as much as I do. And it also has done something else different for me too. Just kind of speaking to that when I see somebody, you know, if somebody pisses me off or cuts me off or does something that I'm not really happy about or hurts my feelings, I remember that's somebody else's child and that mom probably did her best. And it's, you know, no regard to like how that person's behaving maybe in that moment, but that's somebody's child. And for me, like it just kind of humanizes everybody a little bit more and makes me release judgment and brings that immediate connection. So even if you're super shy and you're afraid to say hello to another mom that's got kids the same age as you and is sitting, you know, with her kids at the park or maybe in line at Starbucks waiting for her coffee maybe just say something or or offer help. You know, maybe her, one of her kids is having a tantrum and she's trying to give the baby a bottle. Maybe just break the ice by telling the, the kid that's having a tantrum that there's a really cool slide over there that they could go try. Like, just like kind of put yourself out there, make yourself a little vulnerable because I guarantee you that the other mother is feeling the same way. Like she just wants to connect with someone too. I think you really hit the nail on the head in the, in the sense that, I mean, it is a, it, it is about vulnerable, vulnerability, vulnerability. Mm-hmm. I can say that three times. Um, <laughs> it's a hard and, one. and it's so important to, to do that. Right. Because I think if, even if you, even if you try to try to develop this new relationship with a friend, right. Try to new, new friend. If you don't let your guard down a little bit, then I don't know if that friendship would necessarily flourish. But I mean, but also I also understand you have to be ready, right? And and create those boundaries and know who you can and can't trust, right? So you sort of that's why I like mm-hmm. it, dating sometimes. It's like it's like oh I'm dating all over again. <laughs> like to try yeah. to find friends. But it's but it's fun. You know, I don't know if there's like there's probably meetup groups. I was thinking, well maybe there's like an online app, right? You can find mom friends. <laughs> there must Yeah, be actually there is this app. It's called Peanut. I've I've not used it. I think I signed up for it when I first had my first son mm-hmm. because I was like, who, who can go on walks with me in the middle of the day while I'm on maternity leave? Um, and 
it, it is an app. It's just like a Tinder or those other dating apps where you swipe, swipe right or left to connect. Um, so it is pretty funny that that exists, but it does. It's like basically dating for moms. And you're right. Like not every mom is going to be your mom, like your people, I should say. Um, all the time I meet people and I'm like, I, I like her. I understand her. I um, respect her. She's not my people. And that's okay. But like I gave it a chance and like I, I remember like she's human too. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to ever connect with her again. She might not be my best friend. She's not my people right now. And, but still creating that initial connection, like of motherhood that brought us together. And I have so many friends that I would not be friends with if it wasn't due to motherhood. And I'm grateful that I have those friendships because now my friendship's and the people that are in my life, it's a much more diverse community. I've learned so much more than I ever could have expected from others. And and ultimately, like, you can, if you try and you're aware, you can learn from any other mother that you connect with. You can learn something. Even if it's like, well, I just don't want to be like her. And that's okay, too. You've learned that. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's real. Because I mean, again, and sometimes I liken it to, you know, there are people and I think, you know, they're, they're saying that there are people in your life that are there for a season, people in your life for a particular reason. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's kind of accepting that um, and, you know, and I think also um, acknowledging the fact that you, you know, you, you show courage, right, by going out there to meet someone new, to to broaden your, broaden your own horizons. Cause I think it's, I think it is so important. You know, I have, you know, I have my husband, but he, he's a different, you know, he's, I, I consider my best friend, but he's not another mom, you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, just like, I think he needs another dad, right. To talk, you know, talk to his friends, right. I think we all have to have your kids have their, their set of friends. I think it's important, right. Like, and I think definitely, like you say, um, I think this is a form of self-care as well. Having someone else that you can sort of talk to, just have fun with, and just, you know, just have that have that bond of friendship. Yeah. yeah. You just have to lean into these relationships and sometimes they'll blossom in ways you'd never you'd never expect. Yes. And the good thing is that because, you know, some of the moms might have had similar experiences, they'll understand when maybe there are times when you have to pull back a little bit, like, you know, I just need a little space, come back. So, you know, again, I, I, I think it's just, I think it's just an interesting, um, interesting experience, especially as an adult, I think creating friendships, I think it's just, is a challenge, but it's also um, a joy as well. Yeah. And you, know, you don't think a whole lot about that as you become older, that you have to continue to create these friendships and these relationships. It's not just about you know, making friends when you're a kid, it continues through your whole life. And I do feel in a way it almost becomes more intimidating as you get older. Yeah, I can, I can, uh, I can agree. Cause I mean, there are people that I have admired and I'm like, Oh, I don't know if they would be my friend. Right. I mean, I, I think I'm fairly accomplished. Right. But sometimes like, mm-hmm. unfortunately I know women sometimes any, you know, anybody, women, men, uh, you can have this little self doubt. It's like, okay, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't have the same degrees, or I don't have the same um, career path, or something as this as this other person. But then again, it's kind of like, again, it's it's a comparison syndrome, I think. And so, but eventually, yeah. when I eventually talk to that particular person that now is my friend, I'm like, oh, she's chill. She's like really cool. <laughs> and I learned stuff from her, and there are things that I I bring to the relationship as well. Um, so, and that they learn from, so that's been, that's also been, um, you know, talking to the, talking, talking to the fact that it can be intimidating, I think, um, as you get older, or sometimes I feel like, you know, back in, you know, back in middle school again, it's like, oh man, yeah. I think another other cool girl is going to like me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And it's funny because it can make it feel like you're back in middle school or high school, sometimes like these mom groups and the clicks that are made and. I think it's really important to just be really authentic, own who you are as a mom, make a decision, define who you are as a mom, and allow that to be seen and like kind of put your foot down and just say like, this is who I am. Like you can, you can love me, you can hate me, you can choose to do whatever you want, 
with, with me, but this is who I am. And, and you do you and don't let, you know, those other friends, um, that maybe are moms like really impact that, like, regardless of how close your relationships are, I'm just going to like, give you, tell you a little story here. I have an amazing community of mothers that are in my life in so many different aspects, but just in my neighborhood, um, there are like 10 moms that I hang out with on a regular basis. And recently, one of the t- two of the moms just butt heads on something. And it was nothing like crazy. It was nothing crazy at all. But I think that really what it came down to was they had different ideas on how to raise their children and something came up of it. And, you know, for some reason, they both came to me and kind of asked for advice on what to do. And I just said, look, like you do you, like you do you, you do you, and then just respect one another. Like we're all doing our darnest job and trying to be the best moms we can be. So respect that and know this is really, really, really hard. And this is nothing gets harder than parenting. And it's going to continue to get hard. And you're going to have to continue to lean into it. But what you have to do is define yourself and just be comfortable with who you are as a mother. And don't let there be conflict because one person has an opinion. Like you, you got to put up like a barrier. Like even if it's your best friend that doesn't agree with you, like you need to define you and choose to live by that and then respect others, other mothers for the way that they choose to live. And you're going to learn things. You're not going to like everything, but it's going to be a benefit as a whole in the end. So I think that's a great, a great lesson uh, that you, that I think that, that, that you shared. Now, are there any additional lessons that you think you've learned through either doing your podcast um, or the, that have helped inform your parenting or supporting other moms? Yes. I mean, I'm learning lessons from these women that come on our podcast every day. I could go on and on about different things um, that I talked to. I mean, I'm just so blessed to have this job because I get to talk to so many women that that truly have have done that. Just what I just described, like they've defined themselves within motherhood and they're just taking that definition and they're putting it out there and they're saying, hey, this is what works for me. And they're sharing it. It doesn't mean that that's what you have to do, but I feel like I take little pieces from everybody and it's definitely influenced my motherhood and formed my motherhood. I mean, from the, the ways that I've decided how I want to discipline my kids to the ways that I decide I want to show up for my kids to the way I want to show up in my marriage to the way, um, what type of school I want to send my kids to, like all of those things, like it's all been influenced in a way. Decisions haven't been made, but they've been influenced by what other mothers are teaching me on this podcast. And I'm so lucky because I didn't realize how much this was going to serve me in my motherhood when I started it. Like I said, I thought at first that I was going to be like this expert coach on motherhood and quickly realized I was no expert. But what I did find was I can help guide other mothers and and choose what I want to learn from others and help them navigate this messy and thrilling journey of motherhood. And it's it's really been an honor. And when I'm so fortunate to create these relationships with these women, because when I need something, like for example, I had a medical issue that came up and I tapped into a doctor that we had interviewed, not necessarily for medical advice. I just kind of wanted an idea as to what to expect with something. And she helped me out because I just so happened to be in the middle of like an insurance issue where I couldn't get into a doctor and couldn't get the information that I really needed. But it was nice because, you know, she had the information just based off of what she knew and her knowledge but she, it was also her expertise, but it also was delivered like it was coming from a friend rather than just a medical professional, if, you know. So I've been incredibly lucky to form such a beautiful community of mothers because of this podcast. 
So, Laura, for um, for my audience to find out more about Generation Mom and to learn more about you, what are where where is the best best way for them to learn? The best way for anybody to find us and kind of gather all the information is if you are Instagram savvy, just find us over on Instagram at Generation at Mom. Basically, we have a link in our profile that connects you to how you can download our episodes, um, how you can connect with Jen and I individually, um, all of the information there. We do continuous promotion of the interviews that we do on our podcast, so you can always see what the latest is there. We also share our real-life experience as moms um, and the guests that we have on our show their real life experiences, mom. So we tried to be very collaborative and, um, and honest and vulnerable in that space. Of course, you can find us wherever you listen to quality podcasts. We are found at generation.mom again. So that's generation with a dot and then mom. So think of dot com, but dot mom. And our website is generation.mom. That's all you have to type into the browser. It's not a dot com. It's a dot mom. So very simple, very easy to remember. And we hope you come and follow along with us. Thanks for joining us this week on What is Black podcast. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And for more information about the podcast, our blogs, and subscribe to our upcoming newsletter, go to our website at whatisblack.co. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode. And don't forget to leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh content. Until next time, thank you for listening.